In this video, we will be giving an introduction to common variation. And just for a bit of context, uh, twin studies estimate the proportion of the variance that we observe in a phenotype that is due to genetic variation. And this is in a given population at a given time. However, twin studies do not directly measure this variation. This is what we do with analysis like um, genome-wide association analysis or GWAS. So GWAS directly measure the variation in, in, the, in the individuals. When we talk about genetic variation, we are talking about the genetic differences between individuals. And in this first video, we'll summarize some important concepts around variation and specifically common variations. And you will have the chance to learn more about how to conduct association analysis in other parts of the course. Humans share more than 99% of their genome. This is to say that when we talk about genetic variation, we are really talking, looking at uh, less than 1% of the genome. Still, some of these genetic variants are associated with behaviors, traits, diseases that we observe. The origin of genetic variation is basically through the process of mutation, either spontaneously as a result of DNA uh, copy mistake mm -hmm. or because of external factors like radiation. In this slide, you can see a very simplified way to represent genetic variation. We have one of the chromosomes with the double helix. The bases that form the DNA strands are adenine, which always pairs with thymine and cytosine, which pairs with guanine, um, so A, T, C, G. And if we compare two people, we can see that mostly they have the same base pair all across. But at some points in the genome, we'll also see different combinations of the bases. And this is genetic variation. We tend to look only at one of the two strands. So if we do that, we'll see that person one has C in this position, which may be the same as the reference panel, while person two has A in the same position. You will see many definitions to talk about uh, some concepts, but for now we will be saying that a genetic variant is any specific region in the genome which differs between people. We are going to call allele to any of the versions of this variant. So in the previous example, A would be one version of the allele and C would be the other version. There are some other concepts that are related to the alleles like allele frequency that are very important for what we do. The allele frequency is calculated by dividing the number of times that one allele that we are interested in is observed in the population that we have by the total number of copies of all alleles at that particular locus or location in that population. The total number of copies of all alleles is dependent on the number of individuals in your sample or population. It will be two times the number of individuals. This is related to another concept, minor allele frequency, which is simply the frequency at which the, least, the less common allele occurs in a given population. So let's say A has a minor allele frequency of 0.30. Sometimes we, we look at minor allele counts, especially when our samples um, are very small. And the minor allele count is just the number of times that that allele appears among the individuals that we have. So we are talking about percentages and numbers to talk about the same. Generally speaking, we will be talking about common variants when a genetic variance is present in roughly one or more percent of the alleles in the population. And all those that have a lower frequency will be called rare variants. This is something arbitrary. So this percentage that we are using as a threshold can change. These graphs represent the relationship between the allele frequencies of genetic variants and the expected effect on the phenotype. The effect is a measure of the association of the genetic variants and the trait, and it will be usually an odds ratio or a beta. So common variants usually have small effects in the phenotypes. 
When we do our GWAS, we may be identifying, identifying many common variants that are associated with our trait, but each of them will be contributing very little to explain the traits. Meanwhile, rare variants, uh, if they have any effect, it tends to be large. And in between rare and common variants, we will have different effects and frequencies. The alleles that are rare, if they have a very low or small effect, it will be very difficult to identify anyway. And common variants with large effects are quite unlikely. The focus of the session today and of GWAS is common variation, which will have small effects in the phenotype. And the focus of GWAS is genetic variation that takes the form of SNPs or indels. However, this is not the only genetic variation that we will see in the genome. Other kinds of variation include, for example, large changes in the genome that can get even to chromosomal differences. SNP is the short for single nucleotide polymorphism. There are sites in the genome where some individuals differ from the reference sequence in one of the bases, forming an allele. So for example, if we have this locus here in the genome where two alleles are possible, A or C, and each individual has two copies of this locus, we will find three different combinations, genotype AA, AC, or CC. So in other words, some individuals have a genotype that is homozygous for A or C, and some individuals uh, are heterozygous with a genotype AC. The SNPs can fall in what we call coding regions or non-coding regions of a gene. And if we think about genes, there is this like space, let's say, in between each, each other. And those are intergenic regions. Intergenic regions are non-coding regions. And back in the day, they were called junk DNA, but today, we know that non-coding regions can influence the coding regions, and we see a lot of association. So what happens in the non-coding regions of a gene is that the associations we find are usually related to the regulation of the expression of genes. When we look at associations found in coding regions, they will be indicating that the coding of amino acid sequences may have or not an effect in the phenotype. And a way to explore this is doing follow-up functional analysis of our findings. When we talk about indels, indels is the short for insertions and deletions. We see indels when one or more bases are present in some genomes, but they are absent in others. And these different presentations are the different alleles. The way that we represent indels may be different depending on the problems that we use, although we usually will see what happens in relation to the reference panel. 